want to talk. Domino hoo hoo. A share of £17.8 million must be won in our March draws. Sign up before midnight tonight and see what extraordinary things your postcode could do. Can we let you in on a secret? Yes. These past few months, ITVX has been adding even more of the good stuff. Go on, then. When you've got shows like this, this, and this, you're going to want to shout about it. All right, let's have it, then. I'm in. Get in on the secret with the freshest shows and films. Stream free or go premium with ITVX. Le Manoir aux Quatre Saisons is Raymond Blanc's country house hotel, set in the rolling hills of Oxfordshire. Raymond considers it to be one of the finest in the world, and the only one in Britain that has held two Michelin stars for three decades. Well done. Bravo. Bravo. <laughs> At its heart... Come with me. <laughs> ...is a carefully curated kitchen garden and orchard, which are the foundation for everything Raymond Blanc cooks. They are the inspiration for a new collection of recipes that I cannot wait to share with you. Simple, quick and easy, these recipes will show how even the humblest fruit and vegetables... I think we've got something very beautiful here. ...can be transformed into something truly wonderful for your table. This is the best moment of my life. <laughs> Raymond will be joined by some of his friends and fellow chefs, who will share some of their own secrets for simple, delicious food. That is perfection. Merci. Adam, would like you to taste this beetroot? And some of Chef's most trusted kitchen colleagues will be making an appearance too, whether they like it or not. No, Dom, it's lovely. I'm just a lack of love. So welcome to the world of Le Manoir, to its beautiful gardens, to simply incredible ingredients and simply amazing recipes. Welcome to Simply Raymond Blanc. Oh. It's very emotional. Today, Raymond Blanc will be revealing some cherished recipes which he loves to cook for friends. Oh, la force. A classic sharing dish from his home in France, fondue. I think we're going to enjoy it very, very much. And from his garden, a timeless taste of his childhood, celeriac remoulade. Mmm, could have a little glass of wine. Chardonnay would be perfect. His good friend, Nathan Outlaw, will be cooking a real crowd-pleaser, whole roasted turbot. Bravo. And Raymond will be making the perfect party duo, rosemary and parmesan popcorn and rose petal martinis. Life can be beautiful. The wonderful thing about cooking for friends, you don't have to be fussy. It has got to be very simple. And I've prepared here a wonderful dish Okay, which is really made to be shared with friends and lots of friends around the table. And I'm going to make a fondue, a simple fondue, which is so easy, and I'm sure you will want to make it in your own home. So all what you have to do to start with is to have garlic. Just cut it in half a little bit, okay? Just some little grove inside to make sure that the essence of garlic is going to be spread around this beautiful coquelon. As much garlic flavor as you possibly can. Don't be mean with it, okay? You really put all of your strength in it to make sure it's all over. Obviously, you don't have to have that special pan, okay? But you can do it just in a simple casserole. It will do just the same. But there's a little bit of tradition into it, which is rather lovely. And it's rather beautiful to have eight or 10 friends on the table and put this beautiful fondue in the middle of the table and for guests to use, help themselves. Put your sleeves up, enjoy yourself, have a nice glass of wine and celebrate a special moment. And cooking for your friends is important. The recipe is very simple, okay? I have 600 grams of Conté. You can mix it with Gruyere if you want to, but I prefer Conté, it's my home. Okay, Gruyere is more Switzerland, okay? You have garlic, of course, you've seen it, a bit of arrowroot or corn flour to bind so, so the cheese doesn't split, okay? Okay, a little bit of salt, very little, because the Conte has got enough salt of its own. And then a Jura wine, of course. That's very, very important, okay? It gives that flavor, very distinctive flavor, and lots of it. So now, I'm going to pour my wine on, très bien. 
Then I'm going to make a quick bowl. Ah, about 400 grams, half a bottle. One for the pot, as I say. Très bien. Meanwhile, I'm going to mix my water with my corn flour. Okay, voilà. And just stir it nicely. And that will bind this white wine. And then you can add the cheese. That will make it safe. It will thicken it a little bit. And then the cheese will add all the magic of this golden thread and this tasty, wonderful flavor. You don't taste it, okay? But you have a serious indigestion, just like that. So my garlic has done its job. Or you can put a little clove in here, just a bit more flavor. Now my wine is boiling. I'm going to add my corn flour, which is going to thicken it, eh? I'm going to add not all of it, a little bit to start with, about one third, and you just melt it. You lower down the heat. It's so easy, so unfussy. Here I've got rat potatoes, cauliflower. I've used here only three dips. The traditional dip, of course, is a French baguette. Okay, that you're going to cut into pieces. That's traditional, and you dip it in this wonderful fondue. Okay, so stir it well at first, so it doesn't split, voila. It's almost foolproof, okay? So, almost, I said that, not completely. Okay, so yeah, voila, you add a bit more. Bowl, stir it very nicely. You always think that cheese is actually bad for you, that all fats are bad for you. No, it's wrong. So really, it's a perfect cheese to really enjoy and not to have guilt. Please, you must remove the guilt immediately out of the window, out. It's so important to enjoy. Food is made to be shared and enjoyed. And it is the perfect sharing dish, okay? And look at that, no sweat, easy. I'm going to add now a bit of a kirsch made of cherries, okay? Morello cherries, okay? And uh, that will add a little bit. It's, again, it's always, always adding layers. And one for the pot, of course. If it's split a little bit, just stir it a bit more, okay? From the center, and then move around. Voila, très bien, so it's smooth and silky, take it off, off the heat. So now, my, my fondue is ready, okay? What you need to do now, très bien, and I'm going to cut it like that. Then I'm going to cut it like that. Then I'm going to cut it, oh, like that. And then, little pieces. What a lovely nose, that crunchiness. That's why I love baguette. Voilà. So that's part. I think I'm going to do it all because my brains are really famished. I can feel the gastric juices running around, okay? So voila, you want to have a, a bit of crust. So a baguette definitely is very important. Voila. It's about celebrations, about fun, about friends around the table. And we'll have to pick up the bread. Huh? and dip it in here, in that wonderful, yes, look at that. Oh, that's delicious. Oh, I wish you were there. Le Manoir au Quatre Saisons is Raymond Blanc's country house hotel, set in the rolling hills of Oxfordshire. Raymond considers it to be one of the finest in the world and the only one in Britain that has held two Michelin stars for three decades. Well done, bravo, bravo. <laughs> At its heart... Come with me. <laughs> ..is a carefully curated kitchen garden and orchard, which are the foundation for everything Raymond Blanc cooks. They are the inspiration for a new collection of recipes that I cannot wait to share with you. Simple, quick and easy, these recipes will show how even the humblest fruit and vegetables... I think we've got something very beautiful here. ...can be transformed into something truly wonderful for your table. This is the best moment of my life. <laughs> Raymond will be joined by some of his friends and fellow chefs, who will share some of their own secrets for simple, delicious food. That is perfection. Merci. Adam, would like you to taste this beetroot? And some of Chef's most trusted kitchen colleagues will be making an appearance too, whether they like it or not. No, Dom, it's lovely. I'm just a lack of love. So welcome to the world of Le Manoir, to its beautiful gardens, to simply incredible ingredients, 
and simply amazing recipes. Welcome to Simply Raymond Blanc. Oh. Quel va émotionnel. Today, Raymond Blanc will be revealing some cherished recipes which he loves to cook for friends. Oh, la France. A classic sharing dish from his home in France, fondue. I think we're going to enjoy it very, very much. And from his garden, a timeless taste of his childhood, celeriac remoulade. Mmm, could have a little glass of wine. Chardonnay would be perfect. His good friend, Nathan Outlaw, will be cooking a real crowd pleaser, whole roasted turbot. Bravo. And Raymond will be making the perfect party duo, rosemary and parmesan popcorn and rose petal martinis. Life can be beautiful. The wonderful thing about cooking for friends, you don't have to be fussy. It has got to be very simple. And I've prepared here a wonderful dish Okay, which is really made to be shared with friends and lots of friends around the table. And I'm going to make a fondue, a simple fondue, which is so easy, and I'm sure you will want to make it in your own home. So all what you have to do to start with is to have garlic. Just cut it in half a little bit, okay? Just some little grove inside to make sure that the essence of garlic is going to be spread around this beautiful coquelon. As much garlic flavor as you possibly can. Don't be mean with it, okay? You really put all of your strength in it to make sure it's all over. Obviously, you don't have to have that special pan, okay? But you can do it just in a simple casserole. It will do just the same. But there's a little bit of tradition into it, which is rather lovely. And it's rather beautiful to have eight or 10 friends on the table and put this beautiful fondue in the middle of the table and for guests to use, help themselves. Put your sleeves up, enjoy yourself, have a nice glass of wine, and celebrate a special moment. And cooking for your friends is important. So the recipe is very simple, okay? I have 600 grams of Conté. You can mix it with Gruyere if you want to, but I prefer Conté, it's my home. Okay, Gruyere is more Switzerland, okay? You have garlic, of course, you've seen it, a bit of arrowroot, or corn flour to bind so, so the cheese doesn't split, okay? Okay, a little bit of salt, very little, because the Conte has got enough salt of its own. And then a Jura wine, of course. That's very, very important, okay? It gives that flavor, very distinctive flavor, and lots of it. So now, I'm going to pour my wine on, très bien. And I'm going to make a quick bowl. Ah, about 400 grams, half a bottle. One for the pot, as I say, très bien. Meanwhile, I'm going to mix my water with my corn flour. Okay, voilà. And just stir it nicely. And that will bind this white wine. And then you can add the cheese. That will make it safe. It will thicken it a little bit. And then the cheese will add all the magic of this golden thread and this tasty, wonderful flavor. You don't taste it, okay? But you have a serious indigestion, just like that. So my garlic has done its job. Or you can put a little clove in here, just a bit more flavor. Now my wine is boiling. I'm going to add my corn flour, which is going to thicken it. Eh? I'm going to add not all of it, a little bit to start with, about one third, and you just melt it. You lower down the heat. It's so easy, so unfussy. Here I've got red potatoes, cauliflower. I've used here only three Dips. The traditional dip, of course, is a French baguette, okay, that you're going to cut into pieces. That's traditional, and you dip it in this wonderful fondue. Okay, so stir it well at first, so it doesn't split, voila. It's almost foolproof, okay? So, almost, I said, not completely. Okay, so yeah, voila, a little bit more. Bowl, stir it very nicely. You always think that cheese is actually bad for you that all fats are bad for you. No, it's wrong. So really, it's a perfect cheese to really enjoy and not to have guilt. Please, you must remove the guilt immediately out of the window, out. It's so important to enjoy. Food is meant to be shared and enjoyed. And it is the perfect sharing dish, okay? And look at that, no sweat, easy. I'm going to add now a bit of a kirsch made of cherries, okay? Morello cherries, okay? And, uh, that will add a little bit. It's, again, it's 
always adding layers and one for the pot, of course. If it's split a little bit, just stir it a bit more, okay? From the center and then move around. Voila, très bien, so it's smooth and silky, take it off, off the heat. So now my, my fondue is ready, okay? What you need to do now, très bien, and I'm going to cut this one like that. Then I'm going to cut it like that. Then I'm going to cut it, oh, like that. And then little pieces. What a lovely nose, that crunchiness, that's why I love baguette. Voilà. So that's part. I think I'm going to do it all because my brains are really famished. I can feel the gastric juices running around, okay? So voila, you want to have a, a bit of crust. So a baguette definitely is very important. Voila. It's about celebrations, about fun, about friends around the table. And we'll have to pick up the bread. Huh? and dip it in here, isn't that wonderful? Yes, look at that. Oh, that's delicious. Oh, I wish you were there. Oh, I hope you're going to make it very, very soon in your own home. You promise? Yes, you will. So I use cauliflower here, which I, I slightly blanch. The only thing you can reproach to that dish is it's got a few calories. But again, remember, no guilt, please. We live with guilt. We need to destroy guilt. It's not good for us. It's not good for enjoyment. But learn how to eat, how to eat well. It's worth it. Look at me. <laughs> no, not quite. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> so, of course, you can use ham, you can use sausages, you can use also vegetables. Really, it's beautiful. If you imagine eight friends on the table dipping, you know, the bread, the potatoes, the broccoli, whatever it might be, and having a wonderful time, it cannot be better than that. Okay, bon appétit. Coming up, Raymond will be taking you to the heart of Le Manoir, his kitchen garden, to reveal his love affair with the ugly duckling of vegetables. People feel a bit odd about cooking it. What should I do with it? Oh, you can do some wonderful things. And his friend Nathan Outlaw will be serving up a feast from the sea, fit for a crowd. Home sweet home. You can't, said the voice. You just can't. It's too big, it's too fiddly, too disgusting. You don't have the strength. You don't have the eye, the knack, the know-how. You don't have the time or the patience. Maybe after one more cup of tea, one more YouTube video. Maybe next year, maybe never. The voice is loud, but guess what? A sledgehammer is louder. You can do it when you're being cured. Password? What? You've forgotten not to worry. What was your first pet's middle name? Alan? What's your favourite kind of rock? If your uncle was a soup, what would he be? Soup? It's OK, Buttercup. Buttercup, one, two, three. Have a break. Have a Kit Kat. Say hello to Chase, the digital bank that makes every day rewarding. What does that mean? Well, you get 1% cash back on your everyday debit card spending. Like on this coffee? Absolutely. Why has my debit card got no numbers on it? All your card details are stored in the Chase banking app, so no one else can see them. Will I be speaking to a robot if I call customer service? Nope, just a few taps of the Chase banking app and you're through to a real person. Oh. Sorry. So, who are you again? Chase. We're a digital bank that's already trusted by millions of customers in the US. How many millions? Well, over 56 millions. Blimey. 
Say hello to rewarding banking. Cheese. The Rivers first is banked by the underpass. The flooding is not the council's fault. We're doing everything we can. The body of a man was found in a lift and died two days before the flood. You are not a detective. Welcome back to Simply Raymond Blanc, where he's making delicious dishes he loves to cook for his friends. I remember, no guilt, please. Later, Nathan Outlaw will be serving up a sumptuous slice of heaven from the sea. You have here the best fish, the best cook. But first, there's a part of Le Manoir that is as important to Raymond as his kitchen. 35 years ago, I fell in love with this wonderful house. But the garden, I can show you, scared me because it was grundled everywhere, rabbits jumping everywhere. It was a frightening sight. Now, this beautiful place grows more than 70 varieties of vegetables, herbs, and seeds. It is all organic. It is actually the canvas for my gastronomy, the very heart of Le Manoir, and that's what creates a magic for our guests. And you can't get more magical than Salariac. Some people think it isn't much to look at, but not Raymond Blanc. At Le Manoir, we really love our Salariac. It probably goes back to my childhood because we used to grow these wonderful vegetables. And I think he's gorgeous. Look at him. I say him because it looks him. It's bulbous, it's round, beautiful. It has a reputation for being hard to prepare, but it's so versatile. You can roast it, mash it, or just eat it raw. People feel a bit odd about cooking it. What should I do with it? Oh, you can do some wonderful things. Going to a very simple soup, just with the foliage. A couple of potatoes, the foliage, chop it up, and pour water over it, just water. The secret of cooking of my mum was water, not stocks just simple water, because that has got enough flavor. So I'm going to choose my celeriac. I've got a lot of chores to make here. Which one will be the chosen one? You can see the, <laughs> there's some tiny, tiny little one here, which we have forgotten to grow up. The big one, oval one here, this one is very nobly. They all have character, personality. I like that one very much, yeah. Yeah, I don't know, I fell in love a bit with this one. It appeals to me. There isn't a single part of this amazing vegetable Raymond Blanc doesn't love. Look at his work. I find that very beautiful. That is nature. That is so beautiful. All, all the feed go to, to create this bulb here. And the inside is just as complicated. Obviously now, a little bit of cleaning, a lot of cleaning. Voila. So, good dunk. So you need a good brush. This is beautiful. These lovely colors. Getting a bit more clean water. It takes a little bit of time, but it's worth it for the subtle nutty flavor inside. It's amazing how the groove goes so deep. Look at the different structure inside. I find that miraculous, it's so beautiful. And of course, that's what gives the texture and the flavor, because this nobly bit inside here will be much more peppery than the whitened bit. Mmm. For anyone who's never tried celeriac before, it's very hazelnutty, but it is delicious. And it's worth discovering something new. So that up, voila. I think we've got something very beautiful here. Don't you think so? I think so. <sighs> Salariac grows year-round, so you can use it in everything from stews to salads. And the dish Raymond has picked is a great one to share with friends, rain or shine. 
I thought it was a perfect day today under this miserable weather to brighten it and to do a beautiful salad. The dish I'm going to do is a very ancient French dish, the remoulade of celeriac. So all what you have to do is, uh, <laughs> it's hard. It's, yeah. And all what we're going to do now is to grate it. Of course, you have better ways. I'm a bit of a masochist, uh, so I use this grater, okay, but all by hand, okay? But you can use, of course, the mandoline here, or if you feel rich, of course, you can buy a very expensive uh, electric grater, and that is so easy. That you make it so easy. So that takes a bit, of, a bit of work, a bit of work. But it's worth it, it's truly really worth it. And voila. So we're going to do the apples. Those are not just apples, they are Granny Smiths, and they are grown in my garden, in our orchard. So that will go, the sweetness of the apple and the flavor of the apple will go so well with celeriac. It will temper the flavor. It will temper the pepperiness. You use everything, pips and all, all of it. Okay, so what we're going to do now, voila. So that's at least indeed for six or eight people. I'm always generous, that's my nature, okay? Here it is. So you've got, now very quickly you've got to go quite fast because the celeriac and the apple will oxidize very fast, that means change color. Okay, so we need a bit of lemon juice, which, which will also, of course, add flavor, bring up the flavor, so catalyst of flavor. So let's squeeze it. Très bien. And we're just simply going to serve it up nicely, so all the lemon juice coats all the celeriac so it doesn't brown. So now we have our, our base here of celeriac. We've got our rain, fantastic, beautiful. It's very romantic. I think it's very romantic. Look at the backdrop of these fantastic gardens with all these beautiful vegetables, all organically grown. The rain, the remoulade, the celeriac, the mayonnaise, all is perfect. Really, life is wonderful. So now I'm going to finish my salad. And I'm going to do my mayonnaise. So the mayonnaise, is the base is egg yolk. Because in egg yolk you have a natural emulsifier, okay? Then we need mustard. Okay, très bien. So then you mix them together. And again, in the mustard you have flavor, sharpness, but also it's another, another emulsifier. It emulsifies. That means it will help to incorporate slowly the oil within this beautiful egg yolk mustard base. Okay? So I've got my oil, and slowly, you know, it's very, very simple. You just go slowly and see that now it's sickling nicely. Très bien. I'm going to put a bit of vinegar to thin it down a bit and to sharpen it as well. You could use lemon if you want to. A bit of salt at that stage. Very little. A bit of pepper. Très bien. And now all we're going to do is to mix my mayonnaise. We may not need all, we'll see. Let's see. Et voilà. So that's the first part of it. So you can serve it just like that as a salad in a big bowl, or you can complement this salad with another wonderful vegetable, which is a chicory, or Belgium endive. Yes, you can cut it as you want to, okay? In length way or across, you know, on big chunks. They're lovely, they're chunky, 
they're gorgeous. You know, they're crunchy. There's a little bit of bitterness inside. Voila. And we're going to simply add a bit of walnut oil. Such a beautiful, amazing flavor. Voila. C'est bien. A dash of vinegar. That's what you have is fresh, beautiful food, clean flavors. So autumnal flavors as well. A bit of pepper. Just one little pinch of salt. Mix them up nicely. A few walnuts. I think all of that, yes, it's lovely. Très bien. And I'm going to crush them up. Not fine. Okay, so they really crunchy and delicious. Lovely pockets of flavors which burst out. That's what you want, you know? I'm going to keep a few for the top. Très bien, for the garnish. So then, to finish off, a bit of chive. Voilà, très bien. So now we are ready to dress. So I think the best way is to place your beautiful remoulade, celeriac remoulade on the top here. Look at that, beautiful. Voilà. So we're going to add the salads around. So festive, so gorgeous, so autumnal, so right. The perfect weather for it as well. So everything is ideal today. Everything comes together. So then we're going to add to finish off. And a bit of chive just for the show. Voila. Here I've got my beautiful celery cremoulade with my chicory and walnuts. Bon appétit. Coming up, Nathan Outlaw will be bringing the flavors of Cornwall to the manoir with his whole roast turbot. And I know I'm going to enjoy a fabulous, fabulous meal. And Raymond will be shaking things up with the perfect party combo. It's like heavy rain on a rooftop, you know? Very romantic. Rosemary and Parmesan popcorn and rose petal martinis. Oh, you're a genius. You're built different. Breathing new life into broken. Taking matters into your own hands. Assembling big dreams from the small things. Always fixing, finessing, and fine tuning what's yours. Enter your edge to find the right part at the right price. Milk delivery? You in? I'm in. I'm in. Looks spicy. Medium meal. Yeah. I'm in. I'm in. McCrispy. We're in. Uh, oh, fries for me. Oh, wait, did someone say fries? I'm in. Yeah, how well fancy a filet of fish. <laughs> Expand your palate. Big Mac. Mayo chicken. Double cheeseburger. I'm in. There's nothing quite like a McDelivery. You in? Oh, I'm in. Now your pharmacist can provide some prescription medicine, if needed, without seeing a GP. Just think pharmacy first. Welcome back to Simply Raymond Blanc. 
where he's revealing some easy, delicious dishes he loves to make for friends. We've seen a simple salad of celeriac from his garden, made for sharing. Everything is ideal today. And later, Chef will be serving up the perfect party treat. Et voilà. His rosemary and parmesan popcorn with rose petal martinis. Here at the Manoir, the gates are always kept open as a symbol of welcome. Today, Raymond is welcoming fellow chef and old friend Nathan Outlaw to his cookery school. It's so delicious, it's it's beautiful. <laughs> but for once, he's the one getting the lesson. I'm looking forward to showing you some Cornish fish. <laughs> yes, that's right. Well, you know, most of my fish are buy from Cornwall, you know that. Yeah. All right, that's good. And what better way to treat your friends than his whole roast turbot with roasted root vegetables? So, Chef, thank you for inviting me to your kitchen. I'm going to cook you um, a turbot dish today, cooked over potatoes, um, and then just sort of baked in the oven, nice and simply. Yeah, home cooking. Well, I would like to say, really, I'm very, very privileged to sit here, to have to do nothing, just <laughs> watch you working. <laughs> And, enjoy, and I know I'm going to enjoy a fabulous, fabulous meal. The first thing I need to do, though, is to make the potatoes. So I'm just going to cook these onions down, so just nice and thin. The potatoes are going to be cooked with onions, um, peppers, a little bit of garlic, um, some thyme as well, and then some brown chicken stock, a good bit of olive oil. Of course, good slash of oil. Extra yeah. virgin? Or... Yeah, this is, yeah, this is a, um Italian olive oil. Why not French? What's wrong with the French? <laughs> I'm going to ask you a question. What is British food exactly? You need to tell me. I'd say modern British food encapsulates everything. I think you can take influences from all over the world, and that's what's really nice. In a modern world, you want to be able to take those different things. Would you mind picking a oh, few of those for me? That's That'd giving me a bit of work. That's interesting, huh? The smell oh, of onion, the yeah. sulphur, the aggressivity, and all that's going to turn into sweetness. Yeah. Is it good That's enough, sir? Perfect, perfect. Good. Bit of time there, and then just leave that for five yeah. minutes. If you didn't have this magnificent turbot, which other fish would you use? Everyone hears about lemon soles and place, but a megrim sole yeah. is, a, is a nice, affordable, sustainable fish that would cook. It wouldn't take as long as it's taking for us to cook this now. It'd be, it takes about 10 minutes. So it's much more of a convenience as a fish. You know, it's all about sustainability, is it? It's all about being able to have this kind of turbot OK, in 10 years' time, yeah. 20 years' time, and plenty of them. One way to ensure that is to eat other species as well. I think that's one thing that we do at the restaurant. I mean, I can sell fish now um, like a megrin sole, like a gurna, um, you yeah, know, things that you yeah. would have been deemed as bait Years ago, threw it back yeah. in the sea. People are much more open-minded to try different things. And, um, you yeah, know, usually you'll find that the more sustainable mm. species are the cheaper ones mm. as well. Mm. The onions and the peppers are now sweated down. That's taken about five or six minutes. Give yeah. them a little bit of a season. I just finish it off with, again with more olive oil. And what I've got here is a vinegar, and it's called an agadolce vinegar, which is... I don't know it. It's Thank quite, you very much. So it's a sweet and sour vinegar, so it's not got the harshness. Quite gentle. Mm. By the time that cooks through the potatoes, the onions and the garlic, it's yeah. lovely. So I'm going to slice these potatoes. Don't you think that everyone should buy a mandolin? It's a musical instrument normally. You just got to your fingers. Do yeah, you have well. a special variety for potatoes? This is just a Maris Piper. Keep your hand nice and flat. It's a little trick as well. Yes, that's a good idea. <laughs> Are you going to wash them or not? No. So to keep the starch. Uh, no, it depends <laughs> if you want to keep the starch. Yeah. which will thicken the mixer. Mm. That's up to you. Yeah. Um, that's your recipe. Uh, I usually don't at home. Okay. Get so going I, let's be let's at home. We're at yeah. home, OK, here. <laughs> so what I'm doing here is just starting off with a layer of potatoes at the bottom and then just making sure I'm covering the whole area with the potato, followed by the onion, garlic mm. and pepper mix. So if somebody cooks for me, I will be all the more appreciative. Yeah. The kindest, the most complimentary. <laughs> the most loving guest you can possibly have. That's perfect. So relax, <laughs> yes, and all is going to be great. There's nothing I can do. OK, fine. And at the moment, we're just going to just finish this off so we can get it in the oven. Looks lovely. Looks beautiful. And make sure we get all the juices out of that pan as well, because that's important, all, that mm -hmm. all those sugars that are in there. Yep. Yeah. Can I do the washing up? Yeah, good idea. <laughs> Never thought I'd see you that day. Raymond Blanc doing my washing up for me. OK, so the last thing I've got here 
chef, is um, some brown chicken stock. Mm -hmm. The reason why I'm using the chicken stock on this is because I know, you know, from my chefing experience, that the turbot can handle big flavour. OK. And then a just a couple of... Butter. Cornish butter, obviously. Cornish butter, of yeah. destiny, of yeah. course, indeed. And then that's it, that's going to go in the oven. Look at that. Very posh. Very posh. <laughs> <laughs> then in there. And that should take about 45 minutes to cook. So the next thing is to get a trellis for the fish to cook on. Just some onions, some carrots, some celery, leeks, um, a little bit of thyme and more garlic. Are you using a wine? Are you using vinegar? Are you using oil? In the cooking process, I add some of the vinegar and some oil, and then just naturally there'll be some juice that comes out of there and from the vegetables, and you create almost like a dressing. I learned something uh, very interesting about you. Oh, God, here we go. <laughs> right back in the biblical time, Nathan meant gift of God. Really? Yeah, and me, I'm just called Raymond. That's not good, <laughs> is it? <laughs> but you should know that, I saw oh. no, Gift of God, amazing. Well, I have to tell my wife God. that. Yes, you've got to stay, definitely. <laughs> I'm going to introduce more. myself like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Might not be a good idea. OK, Lovely. So I'm going to put some of this vinegar over the top yeah. of the vegetables. Yeah. And then some more olive oil. OK, so these vegetables are ready now just to go in the oven. And these, okay. are, these will take about 10 minutes. OK. It's just to start yeah. softening them, really. Um, I can already smell that Beautiful. potato Words as well. Beautiful. Lovely colours, yeah. yeah. Lovely. Beautiful colours. The only thing we need to do now is this fish. So, nice big turbot. Yeah. Why people cook so little fish, OK, in their own home? People are a little bit scared about dealing with something like this or something with eyes. And this is the thing, I think it comes from when post-war, when, you know, logistics of getting fish around the country must have been a nightmare. And then inevitably you would have been eating fish that wasn't the freshest. People are much more open-minded with their fish now. There is a progress, yeah, but it's still not enough. Because a fish like that, all what you have to do, your fishmonger clean it up, yeah. and you just put it on a bed of funnel, roast it yeah. in the oven, cook, eat it. It can be as simple as that. Exactly. Very nice scissors, by the way, cool scissors. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they, yeah. Are, they are French. Oh, I knew it was. So basically, I'm just taking off off the frills. I mean, it, yeah. if you were cooking it on a barbecue, I wouldn't even do this. Um, mm -hmm. But part of it is this is a big fish, yeah. and part of it is it's not going to fit in the oven if I don't do this. Yeah. Um, but it will look neater and tidier and yeah. make it much more easy to take the fillets off yeah. when we're serving to our friends. Yeah. Give it a nice season over the top yeah. um, with salt and a little bit of pepper as well. Um, and then I lay some lay some lemon slices over the top as well, and that's just really because I do I still want it to look nice for my my, my friends when yeah. I do oh. it. I mean here I'm totally spoiled. You realise this fish really not only is expensive but it's getting rarer and rarer, and when you have that, it is really a privilege to to have such a fish and cooked by Nathan. It's <laughs> it will taste even better. Thank you, Nathan. No pressure. No, no, no pressure. <laughs> just got this lovely unwaxed lemon, and I'm just going to do some nice thin slices on the top of it, really. So, why have you chosen Cornwall? The first and foremost, I used to go to Cornwall like when I was a child on holidays. So it's nostalgically, it's like a really okay. yeah, I, I, I love it, yeah. Um, yeah. and it's always was something special. So, but the other thing was because I have my love of fish. I'd go places like Loo, and you'd see the mm. lovely market, and you'd see all the the fishing community, and you'd see the boats. And, um, and I used to love that, watching them come in and go out and stuff. And then when I started cooking as a chef, um, I always gravitated to the fish section. The one thing I find about cooking fish is you have to keep it simple, but it isn't the simplest thing to cook. No, complicated and, simplicity, yeah. And Thanks. that's what I loved about it. It was a challenge. Yeah, yeah and what I'm going to do with this now, as I noticed, the potatoes are starting to colour, and the vegetables are colouring as well. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to take the potatoes out. And I'm just going to cover them with a bit of foil. Well, you don't want to burn anything in front of me, do you? No, I don't <laughs> want to burn anything in front of you, <laughs> Chef. <laughs> so I'm going to put that back in. What's nice about these vegetables is they started to colour up. They smell amazing. It's nice to see the sugar's coming through. I'm going to lift the fish... Wow. ..on to the vegetables, like so. Lovely. Wow, it just fits. That's going to go in there. Yes. There you go. And we'll see that in half what an hour. What a sight. What a beautiful sight. Should we get their lovely smells out of the, 
Oh yeah, my man. God, I've got it all. All the smell of Cornwall in yeah. my kitchen. Look, what a beautiful fish. Really yeah. beautiful. And then here we've got the uh, potato as well. It should be uh, lovely. Home sweet home. There you go. Very special home, I must say. Yeah. Looks <laughs> stunning. May I? Yeah, please. It's time being in Cornwall. That's it. For me, what's nice about this sort of thing is that that can go onto the table now. Mm -hmm. and, it, and just by the fish cooking and all those lovely juices, the, the vinegar and the oil that I put on there, and then just the natural sort of cooking juices that come from the turbot, you've created yourself a little dressing or a little sauce. So there's no need. So this is actually very straightforward at home. So um, you know what? Uh, I used to be a very good waiter. So if you need any help for the carving of the fish and the serving, I'm very happily well, yeah, to help you. <laughs> but I'm sure you'll do a good job. Well, I usually <laughs> I, I give my friends a, a, a bit of a challenge or, the, or my kids and sort of um, let them do it. So I just come round the head. Yeah. Where you see and you can feel where all the hard yes. bits are. And I think with the preparation that we did beforehand, taking the frills mm -hmm. off, it, this is an advantage as well. So when it comes mm -hmm. to taking off the edges, sometimes you're lucky and it all comes off in one, sometimes it doesn't. But... Mm -hmm. So you can either do it in the quietness of the kitchen if you feel not unsure of your skills, or if you want to show off and be a hero, <laughs> just do it in front of the guests. And you want to say, bravo. And do you eat the vegetables? Yes. Yes, you do as yeah, well. Yeah, so I'd serve those up as well. But look at that. What a lovely jus. It's beautiful. And then we've got the lovely potatoes as well. And again, there's a little bit of the brown stock in there yes, as well. Yes, so a bit mix more, in. yes. To mix it in, lovely. Home sweet home, gorgeous. Such a wonderful meaty texture. Delicious. Really, really absolutely amazing. You have here the best fish, the best cook. You know, it's true, <laughs> it's the best cooking, really simple. Listen, I've got a little surprise for you. Oh, brilliant. It is. Look, I think if you hear it. Ta da! <laughs> That's a good sound. <laughs> it's a good surprise, eh? You're going to tell me which one goes best with the fish, okay? Okay. okay. It's come from England and it is a beautiful Chardonnay. Mm. That's okay. very close to where I was born. I know. That's why I bought it to you. <laughs> I know. That's why I bought it to you. That's how. You don't believe it? I do. Yeah, I do because I chose that bottle. Brilliant. Yeah, okay. And that's another Pinot Noir from Bolognese, Sussex. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very young. It doesn't need to be. Oh. oh that's beautiful. Really lovely. Look. The colour. And you can see, that's, that's how you recognize the Pinot Noir. Yeah. Very delicate, gamay Pinot Noir. Mm. Oh. Get it first. Thank you. I need to take my glasses out so I can concentrate. <laughs> Very floral, beautiful lemony at the end. Beautiful one. <sighs> Red or white? Come on, listen. I actually like the white. I'd, both, I'd go for both. Why not? We're having a party. Exactly. With friends. Well, thank you very much for inviting me to your kitchen. So joy was all for me. <laughs>Raymond will be sharing a great way to make sure entertaining friends goes with a bang. <laughs> His rosemary and parmesan popcorn with rose petal martinis. Password? What? You've forgotten not to worry. What was your first pet's middle name? Alan? What's your favourite kind of rock? If your uncle was a soup, what would he be? Soup? It's OK, Buttercup. Buttercup, one, two, three! Have a break. Have a Kit Kat. It goes around corners. You know what I mean? Something like that. I've actually noticed a little taffy sound of it. Every time it's been changed to Campbell, actually, I think it is about... Uh, here you go. Oh, I've got no idea where I got it from. <gasps> Just came out of nowhere. It's been going round at the moment, so you're not alone. <sighs>
but that makes me feel better. For health advice, ask a Boots pharmacist today. Say hello to Chase, the digital bank that makes every day rewarding. What does that mean? Well, you get 1% cash back on your everyday debit card spending. Like on this coffee? Absolutely. Why has my debit card got no numbers on it? All your card details are stored in the Chase banking app, so no one else can see them. Will I be speaking to a robot if I call customer service? Nope, just a few taps of the Chase banking app and you're through to a real person. Oh. Sorry. So, who are you again? Chase. We're a digital bank that's already trusted by millions of customers in the US. How many millions? Well, over 56 millions. Blimey. Say hello to rewarding banking. Chase. Welcome back to Simply Raymond Blanc where he has revealed some of his favourite dishes to cook for friends. Oh, that's delicious. Whether it's a fantastic fondue to feed a crowd or a sumptuous sharing salad fresh from the garden. Bon appétit. Entertaining doesn't have to be hard work. And it doesn't get much easier than his rosemary and parmesan popcorn and rose petal martini. Of course, this dish is about, again, cooking for my friends. Okay, and uh, I'm going to cook for you popcorn and to create this simple little dish, which is really, to me, still magical. I love this magic of this, look, this grain, hard grain, you no know, corn, which are so insignificant and they will turn into a child's dream and an adult dream as well. Okay, so first thing what you do is to put your pan on medium heat, then Two tablespoons, one, two, exactly two, I can show you. When the fat starts to slightly smoke, that's when you put your corn inside. Meanwhile, I'm going to infuse my rosemary in butter. So I'm going to put my rosemary here, the butter, so it's got a lovely, lovely flavor. And on, you, don't, you just melt it, you don't brown it, okay? And you let it infuse, okay? And the rosemary, for me, is one of my favorite herbs. And certainly with popcorn, I couldn't think of a better herb because it's strong, it's got vitality, it's got that strength and that Provence flavor. My butter is melting, my oil is warming, my popcorn are ready. What you can see is the oil rippling and there's a slight little haze, okay, on the top of your oil, you know, it is ready. Voila, and here, I've got a whole of Provence, okay, in here. It's a beautiful flavor. And we'll put that later on, okay, onto the popcorn. You've got to be careful. This. Popcorns are very dangerous, okay? That means they, when they pop, they seriously pop. And they can pop, you know, all across the rooms, okay? So immediately, you have to seal them, imprison them, so they can go on popping. Voila, that's ready. Voila. And immediately, you take and shake, shake it up, and you wait. And you're going to hear them, the gentle, beautiful popping symphony of my popcorn. It's beautiful. I think cuisine is magical. Imagine all these chemical changes. From this little grain of corn, you're going to have something so beautiful, and I still find it, I still excited like a child, okay, when I cook and when I see these little miracles. Oh, yes. Lovely. Okay, so you see how, how dangerous they are. So, okay, keep your top on and let them pop. Voilà. Stir it occasionally. Every, that takes about five minutes of popping. It's like rain, heavy rain on a rooftop, you know? Hey, romantic. Don't laugh. <laughs> you see what I mean? That's ready. When they slow down, you see now it's already slowing down, so we're nearly ready. So I'm going to turn it off. And I'm going to shake it a little bit. More, a little shake. Voila. And look. Look at that. I find that amazing. So beautiful. I've been a bit over generous. <laughs> That's good, <laughs> it's a bit too much. Okay, so my rosemary butter is ready and I'm going to add it here. Look at that, beautiful. So I'm going to stir it. I 
Et voilà. Ah, a few for me. You can add a bit of salt. Just one is plenty. You can add a bit of a cayenne pepper if you like it hot. I've here used a bit of smoked paprika, which is really beautiful. It gives that gorgeous smokiness. Always when you add a spice, add it from a height, so that it will clump onto one single place, and you will hate me for it. Voilà, see that? Oh, I love these colors. These colors are amazing. Food is so gorgeous. I feel famished all the time. Oh, it's beautiful. Let's have a look. Mm, the rosemary is coming beautifully through. The smoked paprika is absolutely perfect. It's just such a lovely single little ball of love you're going to give to your friends. Voilà, c'est tout. Always you need a few popcorns to brighten your life. Ah, here's a little added touch, which is this wonderful parmigiano. Okay, and I'm going to grate it. All of it, okay, over the parmesan. Of course, you can use Conte. A mature cheddar would be also perfect. Okay, look, this beautiful white snow falling gently on my popcorn, and you want a lot. Okay, you can add many other flavors, many other spices, many other herbs. It's up to you. So you got about 50 grams of parmesan. You can add a bit more if you want to. Of course, you can add curry leaf, you can add dill, you can add any herbs that you wish, really. <sighs> Popcorn even. Oh, look at that. So now, I have made my popcorn. Now I'm going to do a very special drink. So I'm going to create my hospital martini. And I know many of the blogs will hate me for it because they'll prefer a beer or a nice glass of Pinot Noir or something else. But it is a delicious drink. It is one of my favorites. Okay, definitely. Yeah. So it's pink, it's very rosy, but it's lovely and delicious. Okay, so now we need to check it. Voilà. I need about 40 grams. So use a measure. Okay, it's very useful. Okay. It's like a recipe, okay? If you put too much uh, of one thing, uh, the drink will be unbalanced. Cranberry juice, I need 40 grams as well. It's so easy. Yeah. A bit of rose water, which is distilled rose petals, real, okay? And that you need a tiny little drop, because that's very perfume. That should be fine. Uh, now, a little bit of syrup, that's so easy done. 50% water, 50% sugar. That's it. Boil it, keep it in your fridge. It keeps, it keeps forever. Of course, sugar is a great preservative. So, but a tiny little bit, because I don't want it sweet. Voila. No more. A bit of lemon juice to bring the acidity. So, yeah. Lemon without pips. So, the world is very funny these days. Voila. So, just put a, about a quarter of lemon juice, okay? And then all what you need now is a lot of ice to shake it, to serve it cool, to temper the flavors, to cool them down. Oh. Yeah. A bit more. And all what you do is to shake it. For about 20 seconds to really the drink. The drink is really, really cold. Voila. And I'm going to use a strainer. Now first, I'm going to taste it. Always taste. Same way for food. So I've got my very posh. <laughs> and Adam has given me a very tiny teaspoon here. But it's lovely. Maybe a tiny bit more lemon juice. But it's quite fresh and clean. And it's got very little sweetness, and the rose with the soda, et voilà. Oh, this color is beautiful, this pink is so tempting, et voilà. And of course, the rose petal martini, you must have a little petal of rose and your girl will love it. I don't know about the boys, but who cares? L'amour, toujours. 
For me, cooking is about love. It's about preparing something beautiful for your friends. And a roast petal martinique cannot be better than that. Oh my God, Raymond, you're a genius. <laughs> Maybe not. Beautiful. So I'm waiting for my friends. I think they'll enjoy that. Bon appétit. Thank you for being such a wonderful guest today. And I hope I've inspired you to cook for your friends. It is truly the very best cooking there is. Billy and Greg are back, and now they're outnumbered. Oh no, Marco's hands there. The juggle. Thumbs out. Woo! Well done, you two. And the struggle <laughs> is real. So sorry. Who just farted? Billy and Greg, The Family Diaries. Stream the full series now on ITVX. We're about to go on a little adventure together. Get ready for epic movies with an epic offer. Join Disney Plus for only $1.99 per month for three months to stream the hottest award winners. I am Bella Baxter, and there is a world to enjoy. The newest blockbusters, and so much more. Welcome to the Eras Tour. For a limited time, only $1.99 per month for three months. Think you know Disney Plus? Think again. Buy better, save more. Continue the movement with Vinted. Friday is now free day with Freebie Friday. Level up your orders with free food on us. Did somebody say just eat? Um. I don't know why anyone comes here. It's just so quiet. What? 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 Quite your my mouth with extra gum. Chew good. And you are done. You've got loads left in there. The pride basks in the midday. Sun. By getting your money's worth. Enjoy a medium double cheeseburger, save a meal deal just 4 dollars at McDonald's.